stories around the world to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A pleasant evening. I'm Dilan Juliana. A very good evening indeed. I'm Charita Minaparachi. And now let's move on to the headlines for tonight's news. Devotees mark pause on pulmon per day adhering to health and safety guidelines. Declared for the first time, the state Poson Festival was celebrated at the historic Mihintale sacred site under the patronage of the President. The President says Sri Lanka's policy is timely immunization of every child. The government states that there is no shortage of fertilizer. Rotted sweep 80 cities in the US in condemnation of the killing of the black American. For those in other stories in detail, on your top story. President Gotabe Rajapaksa says Sri Lanka's policy is a timely immunization of every child. The president made this comment joining in the Global Immunization Summit 2020 through video conferencing yesterday. The forum was convened to raise $7.5 billion to distribute vaccines to prevent the spread of disease such as malaria, cholera and measles in some of the poorest countries in the world over the next five years. The forum was organized by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation of the UK and the Gavi Immunization Alliance together with the United Nations. Addressing the forum, the president said, in the wake of the COVID-19 global pandemic, recommencing child immunization has become a priority. I thank Prime Minister Johnson for inviting my participation. Sri Lanka's expanded program of immunization has been institutionalized for over three decades and is well integrated with primary health care services. We provide easy and equitable access to quality immunization services for all children. We have a strong surveillance system and all vaccine preventable diseases are an integral part of the communicable disease surveillance system. We also maintain very high vaccination coverage in all the districts. Sri Lanka maintains an identified budget line for immunization programs, including the purchase of vaccines. Nearly 98% of the cost is borne by the government, demonstrating financial sustainability, which is critical to the success of such programs. We are grateful that GAVI, the WHO, and UNICEF are the leading international donors who have been supporting Sri Lanka financially. Sri Lanka's challenge is to continue to maintain program quality and timely introduction of newer vaccines as the need arises. We are keener than ever to safeguard our success in disease control over the last 30 years. I thank you. Today is the Ponson Full Moon Poi Day, which marks the meritorious advent of Arahat Mahinder to Sri Lanka. This is the highest national religious festival that marks the foundation of the Buddhist civilization in the country and establishment of the Buddha Sasana in the island. Poson Full Moon Poi Day reminisces the exhortation of the Dhamma by Arahat Mahinder to King Devanam Pitisa and 40,000 hunting entourage. Upon the guidance of Arahat Mahinda, the king and the citizens of Sri Lanka, observing the five precepts and seeking the blessings of the Triple Gem, embraced Buddhism. This revolution of thought marked the establishment of a philosophy that was at utmost necessity for the sustenance of a society. The Amadam Sisila a series of Dhamma discussions which focuses on creating a wisdom-based society had its 198th discourse at the Carlton residence at Tangle with the participation of Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha this morning. Today's Dhamma disclosure was conducted by senior lecturer at the Buddhism and Pali faculty of the University of Rohuna, Venerable Koggale Vijitathera of the Kataraga Sri Abhinava Rama.
Due to the COVID-19 risk, it was significant to note devotees engaging in observing of seal and meditation of their homes itself. The Sri Dalada Maligava, to which devotees throng every year, was seen in this manner today. Devotees arriving at the historic Ruanali Sai were seen adhering to health and safety guidelines this morning. Defence Secretary Retired Major General Kamal Gunaratna and Army Commander Lieutenant General Stravendra Silva also engaged in religious observances with a group of devotees. The historic Polonar Vagal Vihare was seen in this manner today. Religious rites were also conducted at the historic Tisamaharama sacred site as well. This customary milk rice puja offered before the Kalutara Bodhi to mark Poson Moayak was conducted today. Meanwhile, the state Poson festival was held at the Mihintale sacred site under the patronage of a tribe chapters of the Mahasangha with the participation of President Gotabe Rajapaksa today. The Sri Lanka Rupavahini Corporation aired a live telecast of the State Poson Festival from the Mihintale Sacred Site, which is where the advent of Arhat Mahinda to Sri Lanka took place centuries ago. The Saddharma Varsha Poyade transmission was aired throughout the day. Our correspondent states, although Dhamma sermons, Dhamma discussions and various pincom were organized at the sacred site, unlike previous years, the sacred site was not filled with devotees. In the wake of the prevailing health situation in the country, the Sri Lanka Rupahini Corporation and many other involved parties took steps to celebrate Lord this day of historic significance with the participation of a limited number of devotees. Today is a significant day since, for the first time in the history of Sri Lanka, a state person festival was organized at this sacred site. Pamalu Machuno Padang Api other key and Apit on the Vinia Tibuna. If I get Apita on the Hadiava Tibuna. With the arrival of President Gotabe Rajapaksa, all religious observances commenced after floral tributes were paid to the image of Arahat Mahinda. It was significant to note that all the Anunayaks of the tri chapters had graced the occasion by their presence. And meanwhile, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha engaged in religious observances at the historic Sithul Pauva Miraja Mahavihare today. The Aloka Puja to mark Poswan Full Moon Poe Day was inaugurated by the Premier. 
Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha engaged in a cordial discussion with the chief incumbent of the Siddhulpa Varaja Mahavihare, Venerable Meetharba Hemaratanatera, and the prelates and the Vihare. The Premier also pointed, planted a sapling at the premises of the Vihare. The book authored by the chief incumbent under the title Ramaniya Sithul Power, the picturesque Sithul Power was also presented to the Prime Minister. Venerable Mithra Bahemaratana Tero said when the entire country was to be destroyed by the corona epidemic, it was the President and the Prime Minister who saved the country and its people. The Tero further stated that if the previous regime was in power, it would not have been possible to save the country. The Tero reiterated that thanks to President Gotabe Rajapaksha and Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha, it was possible to save the country when the epidemic entered the country and the entire country plunged into an abyss. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha noted that this year the Person Festival is marked by the theme Arogya Paramalaba, Health is the Greatest Wealth and Profit. The Prime Minister further stated that the theme was decided given consideration to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Premier also noted that significantly this year Person Moon Full Moon Poe Day coincide with World Environment Day. The Premier expressed displeasure at seeing health and safety guidelines being adhered at the Person celebrations. The Situl Pavaraj Mahavihara was eliminated by the Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha. And President Gautabi Rajapaksha says uh, through the advent of Rahat Mahind, our society's values, arts and literature and crafts took a new turn. The President made this comment issuing a message to Mark Poisson Full Moon Poi Day. The Sri Lankan Buddhist who is unwavering in the wake of the eight fall realities, does justice to the flora and fauna, has virtue as part of his way of life and practices the four virtues of Metta, Karuna, Mudita and Upeka, is formed through the social and cultural revolution which have shaped stupas, tanks resembling oceans, farmlands that made the country self-sufficient and crafts that have amazed the world. As a honourable nation, we have come forward along the way of life, known through the doctrine exhorted by Arahat Mahinda, which constitutes in creating a civilised society that acts with wisdom for the merit of the world here and thereafter. Thereby, not only in historical times, but also in the future, Poisson Full Moon Poi Day will be engraved in all hearts as the day on which Buddhism, which is the gift most valued by us, a country, was inherited by us. The message issued by the President further states that his belief is that justice will be served to all in a disciplined and prosperous society, wholesome in spiritual values. The President further states that his government is launching plans not only for the present but for the future based upon this principle. He says that even in the wake of the current epidemic, we have not deviated from that basis of civilization. The President concludes stating that we, the Sri Lankans, have no journey without this basis. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha says with the advent of Arahat Mahinda, in a very short period of time, this country transformed into a pure culture and a civilized, respectable nation. Amazing craftsmen who carved noble virtues such as love and compassion onto the great rocks in the forests and great poets who extolled nature nourished the culture of this country in the eras that followed. An excellent nation that loves and protects the flora and fauna and the lakes and the rivers was formed as this great philosophy had infused itself in the minds of our ancestors. The Premier in his message points out that today, to a certain extent, we have deviated from this basis. Therefore, the COVID-19 epidemic has taught the whole world a significant lesson on looking back on its past actions. 
The Premier says that Sri Lanka was able to take a victory path in the context of the epidemic since we, a country, acted as one and fulfilled observances based on virtues nourished by Buddhism. The President's media division issuing a release notifies that with effect from Saturday, the 6th of June, which is tomorrow, curfew will be in place in all districts throughout the island from 11 p.m. to 4 a.m. until further notice. Except for the Colombo and Gampaha districts, permission for movements between other districts remains unchanged. The government requests for the public when carrying out day-to-day -day activities and in the operations of public and private sector organizations to fully adhere to health guidelines as before. The National Fertilizer Secretariat states that there is no shortage of fertilizer in the country. Speaking at a media briefing here today, Director of the National Fertilizer Secretariat, Mahesh Gamanpilla, stated that strict legal action will be taken against agents who sell fertilizer for high prices. Fertilizer required by farmers has already been distributed. Last year, during the Yala cultivation season, 67,000 metric tons of urea fertilizer was distributed. This year, 80,000 metric tons of fertilizer have been distributed so far. At the last Yala cultivation season, 16,000 metric tons of TSP fertilizer was distributed, whilst this year, 12,000 metric tons have been distributed so far. 19,000 metric tons of MOP fertilizer was distributed last year, whilst 25,000 metric tons were distributed this year. And meanwhile, payments for the depositors of the finance company will take effect from Sunday, the 7th of June. Core Cabinet Spokesman Minister Dr. Bandulogana Vardhana stated that measures have been put in place to mark payments through 60 branches of People's Bank. Thereby, these payments will be made for the People's Bank branches located in close proximity to the relevant branches of the finance. Stay tuned for more, in, more local news after this break. Anubudhuhimi ke tam sisilin pahasalada mihin kalavin in sil suvandavinda Besa yana vita di lower elicota poson sada, Sanesuma udaveva, lak derana mata. Me poson superbatum, Jatika lipakin is a payuman, litro gas lanka samakame. Free maka to me, stay safe, eat hot. Anu putu himi ke tam sisilin pahasalada, Mihin kalavin in a sil suvandavinda. Besa yana vita di lower. Eli kota poson sada, sana semua udah weba, lak derana mata. Mi poson suba betul, jadi kelipak ini saya bayu men, litro gas langka sama kami. Welcome back with more local stories. Today is the World Environment Day. This year's theme is based on taking time for the environment. World Environment Day was declared according to a decision taken at the Environment Forum held at Stockholm in Sweden in 1972 and marks inauguration day of the United Nations Environment Program. World Environment Day was first marked on the 5th of June 1974. The annual theme is declared taking into consideration environmental challenges faced globally at different periods of time. President Gotabe Rajapaksha issuing a message to mark World Environment Day states that there is an undisputable bond between man and other living creatures and the environment. Since times of the past, the bonding the Sri Lankan society had the environment has enabled their way of life to be enriched. Therefore, the need to educate the next generation on our past knowledge of the environment as well as the environmental issues faced in the present context is felt as never before. The message of the president further states that the necessity for a sustainable environment strategy was recognized in the manifesto on a prosperous vision. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha issuing a message to mark World Environment Day notes that the year 2020 is a year in which urgent ambitions and actions were encountered in the search for solutions for the crisis faced by nature. In his message, the Premier points out that at present, as a global community, we are faced with several environmental crises arising from human activity, resulting in global warming, water pollution, crimes on wildlife, natural disasters, air pollution, deforestation and weather pattern changes. 
The president, to mark the World Environment Day, planted a sapling at Mehintale sacred site today. Meanwhile, the premier, to mark Environment Day, also planted a sapling at the Calderon resident premises at Tangol today. An environmental photography competition and exhibition titled Sobaru is organized annually to mark World Environment Day. This event is organized by members of the National Association of Photography and students studying the subject. The exhibition was not held this year due to the spread of COVID-19. However, the competition was held online and the winners were selected. The winning photos have been released on the website www.napsl.lk. We momently deviate from local news to take a look at few international stories. The social media site again moved to enforce its terms on the U.S. President Donald Trump's political messaging after fact-checking some of his tweets about voter fraud and masking another tweet which Twitter said glorified violence. Twitter has disabled a video posted on its platform by U.S. President Donald Trump's campaign, citing a copyright complaint. It's the latest twist in a brewing feud between the social media site and the president. Last week, Trump fumed after Twitter fact-checked some of his posts about voting fraud and tagged one of his tweets about Minneapolis protests as glorifying violence. The clip posted by the Team Trump account is a collection of photos and videos of protest marches and destruction in the aftermath of George Floyd's death, with Trump speaking in the background over sentimental music. Floyd's death last week after a fatal encounter with a police officer has led to nationwide protests. Twitter said the video on the president's campaign account was subject to a copyright claim. A spokesperson said, quote, we respond to valid copyright complaints sent to us by a copyright owner or their authorized representatives. After Twitter disabled the video, the Trump campaign tagged Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey in a post writing, Twitter and Jack are censoring this uplifting and unifying message from President Trump after the George Floyd tragedy. The three minute, 45 second video was uploaded to Trump's YouTube channel and tweeted by his campaign on June 3rd. The clip is still on YouTube. The video streaming platform's parent, Google, did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Trump has pledged to introduce legislation that may scrap or weaken a law that shields social media companies from liability for content posted by their users. And the protest update from Australia. Authorities in Australia, most popular state in New South Wales, are trying to block a Black Lives Matter protest in Sydney scheduled for Saturday, citing the risk of a coronavirus outbreak. Authorities in Australia are trying to block a Black Lives Matter protest in Sydney scheduled for Saturday, citing the risk of a coronavirus outbreak. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian explained the decision to take legal action on Friday. The matter now rests with the state's Supreme Court. This is because the protesters could not guarantee adherence to the health orders. They could not guarantee safe social distancing and simply the number of protests protesters far exceeds, far exceeds the health orders and we can't afford to have exceptions for anybody. Police in New South Wales originally approved the protest on the understanding that there would be fewer than 500 participants. Organizers now expect thousands of people to attend. The last minute decision from the New South Wales government came after Prime Minister Scott Morrison asked people not to go. So for all of those Australians who couldn't attend the funeral of a family member, or couldn't see a loved one in a nursing home, or a veteran who couldn't remember their fallen colleagues by attending a war memorial service on Anzac Day. I think all Australians owe all those other Australians a great duty of responsibility. And I say to them, don't go. Not because you shouldn't express your view, Find another way to express your view. A protest in Melbourne is still scheduled to take place with state police approval. It's set to emphasize Australian Indigenous people, including the deaths of Aboriginal men in custody. Victoria Premier Daniel Andrews has urged people not to attend. Scientists in Sweden are hoping an Africa named Tyson can help deliver a knockout blow in the fight to develop a treatment or vaccine against the novel virus. Meet Tyson the alpaca. Scientists in Sweden hope he could deliver a knockout blow in the fight to develop a vaccine against the new virus. 
A team from Karolinska Institute immunized the 12-year-old alpaca with virus proteins and isolated tiny antibodies, known as nanobodies, from his blood. They then bind to the same part of the virus as human antibodies and could potentially block the infection. Gerald McInerney is a scientist working on the project. So these are the antibodies that we took from the alpaca's uh, blood cells and we can see that those antibodies are bound right on the surface exactly at the point that the viral protein needs to get into cells and so this gives us a structural understanding of how these antibodies work to stop the infection. Alpacas are known to produce nanobodies. They're far smaller than the full-size antibodies humans produce and so they're potentially easier for scientists to work with. The researchers hope their work with Tyson could form the basis of a vaccine against the new virus, although their work is still in the early stages. In principle, uh, it, there is all the evidence would suggest that it will work very well in humans, but it's a very complex system, uh, so we look forward to, to getting to do those experiments. As for Tyson, who lives in Germany, his job is done. Well, Tyson is 12 years old, I believe, and so he may be looking at retirement soon, and uh, so he'll live out his natural life on his farm back in Germany. And we continue with more news from home. The number of COVID-19 patients in the country to have fully recovered currently stands at 858. 19 patients were discharged from hospitals upon full recovery today. The number of COVID-19 infected patients currently undergoing hospitalized treatment stands at 932. Today, four new confirmed patients have been reported so far. Two of them are Navy personnel, while the other two are returns from Bangladesh. Yesterday, 48 newly confirmed COVID-19 patients were detected, out of which 42 were Navy personnel, while the other were returnees from overseas. They include three returnees from India, two from Bangladesh and one from Dubai. Amongst the overall COVID-19 patients reported in the country as of today, 883 are Naval personnel and they are close associates. This is a percentage of 49.02. 605 infected persons were in de detected from amongst returnees from overseas, which is 33.59%. All the other positive patients, which is 313 and is a percentage of 17.37, were detected locally. The Ministry of Foreign Relations today issued a revised set of guidelines on the PCR testing and quarantine procedure for diplomats entering Sri Lanka. Thereby, diplomats on their family members need to produce a PCR test result report taken within 72 hours before leaving their respective countries. In the event of their not being able to obtain a PCR report, such individuals will be subject to PCR testing at the Katanaki International Airport. They will have to undergo self-quarantine at their respective official residences. And meanwhile, the cardiac intensive care unit and the port complex of the Tangol Base Hospital will be vested with the public on the 6th of this month by Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha. The cost involved has been 35 million rupees. The need for a cardiac intensive care unit was felt at the Tangol Base Hospital over a considerable period of time. Therefore, Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha allocated an adjacent building of the Tangol Prison for the purpose of constructing this board complex. The building was being renovated to house the board complex since the 2nd of April. Construction work of this board complex comprising a cardiac intensive care unit was completed within a short period of two months, also with the financial contribution of donors in the area. The Ruhun Karavli organization in Tangol pioneered the endeavor. Former parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha engaged in an observational tour of the construction work today. Upon the request of Minister Chamal Rajapaksha and former parliamentarian Namal Rajapaksha, the Ministry of Health has provided medical equipment worth over 25 million rupees to this intensive care unit. And with that, we can do tonight's news. Do it just tomorrow at the very same time. Stay safe. Good night. Good night.